Let's spend a moment on India. This is the year of the G20 presidency for India. Our Prime Minister Modi made a big pitch for the Global South just last week. Um, what's your sense of how this year is likely to pan out from an Indian perspective, given that this is the big year of India being the G20 president and the SCOG? Yeah, it is a big year for India. I think the whole world is looking to India for a sense of leadership, for a sense of an agenda for the G20. Um, Foreign Minister Jay Shankar has already said that he intends for Delhi to be the voice of the Global South. I think that's going to mean, um, you know, an important stance in climate change negotiations, in trade negotiations. Um, India's friendship, I think, with America uh, is going to help it in this regard. Um, you know, usually, uh, I think historically, you know, whenever India has been non-aligned, that has sort of hurt it in some respects. But in this case, it's a strength to be diplomatic is a strength when you are running something like the G20. Um, so I think a lot of eyes will be on the the way India navigates the global mood. And it has done that very well in the last year. If you look at how um, it has, you know, in some senses maintained a historic friendship with Russia. It has continued to buy Russian oil on the cheap. I say continued, actually. Indian oil purchases have gone from 0.3% of total crude to something like 23% in the last month. Uh, so a dramatic rise. And it has done all of that while remaining very friendly with America. So in that sense, it is, a, from an Indian perspective, a diplomatic feat. Uh, the question now is whether it is able to leave a legacy in terms of the G20. You know, Indonesia was, when it had the, the G20 presidency last year, was really thinking about a legacy in terms of uh, what people will remember it for. I think that's what the Indians will be looking to do. What do you think India's legacy of the G20 could be as its president? Well, uh, you know, I would imagine uh, we've seen a real move towards deglobalization in the last year, five years, given COVID. Um, I, I suspect that will be an area where India might like to try and reverse course to some extent. You know, India has been at the forefront of what we've begun to call mini-lateralism. So these smaller groupings, I2, U2 with Israel, UAE, US, yes. the Quad, of course. Um, so uh, India might sort of use that as a means to maybe even reshape how countries speak to each other. Uh, I imagine climate change would be front of the agenda in some form. Last year's big uh, change was an agreement on loss and damage payments. I think if India is able to show some leadership in terms of what those payments look like, who gets those payments, um, it's outside the G20 framework, but still an important part of it because ultimately those are the countries you need to pressure. So those are some of the things I imagine that will be on the table. Let's spend a moment on the United States. Uh, Gideon Rahman had a piece out which I, where he says that uh, Biden could go down in American history as one of the country's greatest presidents ever. Now, just just seeing his mannerisms and the, you know his profile, that's not really the sense he conveys that here is one of America's great presidents. How do you assess the Biden presidency, given that it is now increasingly clear that President Biden will seek re-election? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think he's days or weeks away from announcing formally that he will seek re-election. Um, I think broadly, uh, at a domestic level, uh, he has achieved some great successes. The fact that they were able to pass the Inflation Reduction Act is just seismic. Uh, not only for inflation, even though the, the effects there were minimal, mostly climate change. I mean, the investments into climate and climate uh, initiatives into green energy are something totaling around $400 billion. Uh, that is immense from an American standpoint. I know that European and Asian uh, allies are calling it protectionist, but frankly, you need competition when it comes to climate change, and that's a good thing. Uh, semiconductors, uh, massive, I think, $50 plus billion dollars investment, um, really ramping up competition with China there. So there are some big successes, successes they've managed to get out of COVID in a way that I think was relatively uh, successful compared to the rest of the world. Uh, those are things I think that the people will remember uh, come polling day. Um, foreign policy is a bit more mixed. I think America has done very well on Ukraine uh, as much as it could. Um, it is a mystery to me still what America's China policy is. Uh, I think this will be the defining foreign policy issue for America over the next 20, 30 years. And What's un unclear to me is, does America want to contain China? Does it want China to keep growing and uh, just not be a military threat? Uh, where the rest of the world fits into all of these things 
increasingly unclear to me. So the jury's out there.